Welcome back to another episode of Behind the Small Screen. I don't know if I'm gonna have to put this episode into two separate parts or what, because there is a good amount that I wanna talk about. And you'll notice I'm gonna be looking at my phone a lot. I'm not texting or anything. I wrote down a lot of stuff that I wanted to cover and like I just wanna make sure that I cover everything that I wanted to talk about. Because this episode is gonna be pretty hefty because it's all about my first year in LA living there and a lot happened in my first year living in LA. First and foremost, here's a fun little fact. When I was webcamming, and um, this was like halfway through webcamming, and then when I started to do adult film, I had a different name, and that different name was Leighton Parker, and honestly, sometimes I think about it, I'm like, I kinda wish I kept that, cause it kinda, it's classy, it's nice, but whatever, obviously I didn't. So I chose the name Alex Links. I re-rebranded myself when I signed with my agency, and I chose Alex because when you go on to any agency's website, their list of women, the roster, alphabetized, right? So I did that with the intention of a director or whatever is looking at the new girls and it starts with an A and the A would be the first name that the eyeballs fall on. So there was strategy behind this and I do know a couple other girls. I think Adriana Chechik mentioned, I heard her say something somewhere that she did the same thing. So I, I don't know who else has done this, but I know for sure there have been other women who have done this as well. Whatever, just a little fun fact. So yeah, my first year in LA. So basically I was back and forth from the Valley to New York over several times throughout, the, throughout that summer of 2014. And I had always wanted to live in California. Again, I don't know why, I don't know where it came from. I grew up watching Laguna Beach. I was watching Girls Next Door. I just always loved, like, and when I say loved, I mean basically like obsessed with the idea of living somewhere that was like paradise. So you got the palm trees, you got the beaches. I love warm weather more than life itself. I love sunshine. I love the ocean. And it seemed like the perfect place to live. And back then, even in my head, I was like, why the f would anyone want to live somewhere like in this gray, gloomy state? Like, for example, I was in New York and the winters are pretty brutal. And I was like, I don't have to live here. Why don't I just move? So after going back and forth for a bit, I just made this decision. I was like, I'm 25. I'm so young. My life is like, I have so much. My life is just like starting. So why don't I restart it somewhere that I actually wanna be and like plant myself. And honestly, I thought that I was going to live in Southern California forever and I'll save that story for a different time, but that was really my intention. And so I just, you know, and by the way, moving, it's hard. Like it's hard no matter what way you look at it, but when you're, I was so young like that, I had no responsibilities. I still have pretty minimal responsibilities to others. And it was just a good time. So I found an apartment in Hollywood because it was the only place I knew of. Wouldn't recommend if you're trying to move to LA, probably don't move to Hollywood unless you're really about city life. It just was not a good fit for me. I made it work the first year. I had a lovely apartment right next to Runyon Canyon, which is a super hot spot as far as like hiking. It's like I, a lot of people go there, right? There's all kinds of dogs there. It's just a very walkable area and it's, it's pleasant enough. Um, so yeah, I've got an apartment out there in Hollywood and I quickly realized, however, like, and by the way, again, I was only doing girl girls. So there are far less filming opportunities for girl girls slash like fetish models than there are for boy girl models. And that just is the nature of the business, which I did not fully realize until I was in it and so when I moved out there I always and and also by the way like I always knew this was going to be necessary like it just it was basic knowledge to me that I would never have all my eggs in one basket and by that I mean I would never only rely on for example oh well my job is that I'm a performer therefore I only get income from being a performer and going to set like no 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 it was never like that I was always doing customs I was webcamming I was filming my own scenes even if they were at home like amateur style and then I was going to that also to supplement that income but it was never the vibe of like um you know i'm just gonna do this one thing and plus i like doing all kinds of stuff all kinds of projects it's just fun for me so 
And for like a hot minute, I was like, oh, maybe I'll just be a full-time performer and just go to set all the time. After realizing that was not an, an option, I basically had no choice but to get my hustle on in all these other areas. And that is where I very early on and also in the cam world, I learned the discipline of just showing up for myself every day, of treating it like a business, of, you know, today I'll do five scenes, tomorrow I'll do five customs, whatever. Just really like staying on top of my <laughs> staying, uh, like I said, discipline, so key, right? I was just doing all these things and sometimes I would go like three weeks to a month without getting booked at all for a company. And I just knew the importance because of that, quickly realized the importance of being self-sufficient, of having other people help me and just, you know, keeping everything afloat and moving smoothly forward. And, um, oh yeah, so basically that with that attitude that I have with the idea of like, okay, I gotta be self-reliant, I can't rely on anyone, even if I were working full times for com companies, which was not a thing for me, would not have been a viable thing for me, you have so many what ifs. A lot of times shoots get canceled, talent gets sick, talent canceled, something happens with the set, like you never ever, sometimes there's a moratorium, which means the entire industry shuts down when there's a, a, a large STD scare, for example. There's too many factors that are out of my control so that way I decided that going forward forever and always, I would always prioritize my content, my stuff, my fans over companies. Companies would be a cherry on top. My stuff came first. Very unpopular opinion and take on that world in that time. Nowadays, that's how it is. I'd like to say I was ahead of my time because I was. And that attitude was not taken too well you know, sometimes, and, and and I also understand an agency's business, sometimes my agent would get me a shoot and occasionally I would say, no, I can't do it because I had a bunch of custom scheduled for that day that needed to get done. Rarely, but it would happen. So um, yeah, I was always, always filming, always doing something on my own and then doing the shoots in between. So I also found during that time, a couple other platforms that were kind of like Canby, but not. They were called Chatstar and Dream Lover. If anyone remembers those nowadays, the big one is Panther, which I am on. It's basically an app where you can text your favorite models and the, you can charge for photos, for videos, for audio messages, for custom videos, all just on your phone. That's why I'm a huge fan of it. That's why eventually I did stop camming altogether because it was a lot easier for me to just like be like this and just like sitting on a cam, like waiting for people. And uh, it kind of evolved in that way. So I had all these different streams of income already established that I was always working on. So I always had money coming in and that felt really good to know that I was able to provide for myself and give myself a sense of security and a cushion and stability. Very important. So I basically spent that first year, I was just doing girl, girl. It was a little, like I would get scenes here and there. It was a little bit slower than I had thought. During that time, I was also, you know, I'm 25, 26, 25. 25. And uh, you know, I was in LA. I wanted to make friends. I wanted to go out. I wanted to have fun. And there were times like this was like right before I made the full time move to Hollywood, where you know we'd be out with the girls like me, Taylor, Brooke, and Carmen and Bailey, and like we would just go out like I mentioned before. And I just remember one night and rewind by the way. <laughs> In LA, it's kind of weird. It's a different vibe than any other city because you have like, it's a city, but you can go to house parties and these house parties are like in the hills at super bougie mansions, whether they're at like, um, you know, someone's house that they own or it's just like a rented out place. And there's all kinds of people mingling there, like A-list celebrities, like musicians, like just mishmash of all kinds of people. So, you know, when I was that young, I was like, oh my God, I like, I want to party. And um, I think that happens to a lot of people because it's kind of like a culture shock and you're just like in it. You're like, oh my God, there's huge parties happening like 20 minutes away, like let's go very easy to get swept up and I'll get into that in a sec. But there was one time I do vividly remember, <laughs> this is back when I was still like a drinker. I would get out, go out and like get wasted here and there. And uh, I got so drunk at this house party. I was with Carmen and I think Brooke was with me. 
and um, I think the other chicks had left. Again, this is a while ago. My memory's fuzzy. I vividly remember being so drunk. I th we called an Uber to bring us back to the model house, and I f ordered Carl's Jr. drive-through. So I got French fries and chocolate cake after being at this party with Carmen and I think Brooke. And I just remember waking up the next day and I had frosting all over my face. I'm like, oh my God, I am that And needless to say, I had the worst hangover ever. And that was one of those points where I was like, I'm never drinking like this again. So like, by the way, fun fact, like I kind of slowed it down after that. <laughs> so it did get pretty crazy sometimes. And uh, like I said before, it's very easy to get swept up into that world because there's so many things happening at all times. You always have an, op an option to go and party. So you really have to be disciplined and on top of and not get sucked into things, especially when you're that age and you're a woman, you know, you first move out, you're hanging out with promoters, the promoters take you to the clubs. It's like so cool. And it's like, but it's like the same thing all the time. And for me personally, luckily, I've always been pretty disciplined. So always in the back of my mind, I was always pretty responsible. Like even if I would go out, I would still be like, okay, I gotta be home by this time because tomorrow I have work or I have to do these customs or whatever. But um, I saw a lot of people I knew, whether they were girls that like got in the industry and partied hard and then crashed and burned and quit and never to be heard from again, or just people in general that I just encountered, like I crossed paths with that like just really got sucked into like the party scene. And the thing that I learned quickly on, thank God, was that the party is always gonna be there no matter what like prioritize myself and have fun when I can, but prioritize my work because that's why I'm here. And rant, right? And yeah, like I said too, it's like, it is, if you're like any sort of like a people pleaser, especially at that age, like a young woman, like I was kind of coming out of that phase when I moved out there again, thank God. But it's like, you meet like people and they'll be like, come on, just come out, just do this, just do that, it'll be fun. Oh, you're no fun. And if you are like, if you are susceptible to being pressured and being like, well, okay, and being a pushover, they'll f eat you alive. And I think that's when looking back that I developed like a really thick skin and like, just like my give a f just like my, my not give a f rather just like went way, way up. And I'd be like, no, I'm good. And just left it at that. Like I'm over it, you know? And, and it's just like, as a woman, it's like, you know, when hindsight you think, oh, this is so cool, but it's like the calling you because they want more girls at the party like it's just like not the vibe that I wanted to be a part of so yeah I did get sucked into that for a bit but not for too long anyways oh god yeah I did get sucked into that for a bit and speaking of another thing that stopped me from going out to parties for a long long time and oh my god am I lucky okay so I got an invite, I don't even remember. I somehow got an invite to the Playboy Mansion to a party, like a random weekend in the summer. Of course I'm elated because it's a Playboy Mansion and never been. I was like, oh my God, amazing, whatever, cool. I hit up this girl that is mutual friends with my best friend. So my best friend of the day in New York, they grew up together in Ohio and uh, she was living out there at the time. And she's the only person I knew that was not in the business that was also like old enough and mature enough that wouldn't be like, fuck wild if that makes sense so like I could take her out and she'd like keep it together so um we went to the Playboy Mansion and I just remember like we had to meet somewhere I think it was Beverly Hills we got on this bus and it was like a bus of women like in bikinis and they basically like carted us to the mansion and that was trip you know I'm in LA I'm fresh I'm going to the Playboy Mansion I'm going to a party at the Playboy Mansion like <laughs> it's like bright-eyed and bushy-tailed but I gotta say so before the party this girl and I we had one glass of champagne at her apartment just a little pregame or whatever I get we get to the party we go to the bartender and by the way it's popping it's just like a fun in the sun, I want to say, maybe that was called, or maybe it was something different, but it was just like all bikinis, lots of women, lots of dudes, and uh, lots of older dudes, kind of a weird vibe, but in that moment, I was like, la, la, whatever, so we both get one glass of champagne, drink it, we're chilling, whatever. I go frolicking around, I'm in the, I'm looking at the peacocks, I'm in the zoo area, I'm just like bopping around, 
and my friend's doing the same thing. We mix and mingle and go our separate ways because I kind of do that sometimes. And then I don't remember much, but what I remember is I was texting my ex at the time, my ex now, but my person I was with at the time, a bunch of slop just like, like drunken that made no sense. And I am not that person. Even when I would go out and party, I was not that person. So he kind of knew something was up. And then fortunately, again, I don't remember much. I remember is I remember um, getting this girl, calling an Uber, somehow, some way, sent her home in an Uber, but dropped her off. I was in the Uber and the Uber dropped me off after. Blacked out, passed out, woke up about 15 hours later the next day with probably one of the worst hangovers of my life. And in that moment, my ex too I was living with and he's like, you got roofied. And I was like, no way. And I got roofied. And that was probably one of the scariest moments of my life because, you know, what if I was on, God forbid, some other drug? What if there's so many what ifs that could have been so dangerous and nothing happened? And I texted this girl and I was like, hey, what's happened? How are you? Blah, blah, blah. Same thing happened to her. She's like, we got roofied. And she's like, I just got off the phone with one of my friends. And my friend was like, oh yeah, that happens to girls all the time. They get roofied all the time. I was like, oh my God, what the f So... Thank God someone was watching out for us. Like, I don't know. I'm just so fortunate. I'm obviously, we'll never go there again, but in that moment, cause new ownership, but I was like, I'm never going there again, that place. So I'm just glad that nothing happened. So there's a little bit of a dark story, but that was a big eye opener for me. And I think I needed that to show me that LA might be beautiful and it might be fabulous, but like there's some dark that goes on. So you got to really watch your own back. So anyways, that aside, uh, I, aside from the parties, it was a great time. I basically spent the whole year mixing and mingling and going to industry events. Like they'd have AVN, they'd have like industry house parties. They would have like, and where you could go and network. They would have like random talent would have little get together. So I was doing everything I could to like get in with the, um, with the adult community. Because even back then I knew like, it's really all in who you know, it's all about networking. I need to meet the right people. And plus I wanted to make friends. And at the same time, it was hard for me because I always, in my mind, I always wanted to have a life outside of the adult industry. And that was by far the hardest thing for me to cultivate. And that took the longest time for me to cultivate. It actually took a couple of years for me to really like bring to fruition. Cause you know, I was out there in my whole bubble. It's my whole world was, was, was that world. And that was fine, but that's, I always wanted more than that. So I spent a lot of times I was, I was going to set. I know I shot for Hustler. I think I shot for them again, Girls Way. Um, definitely all the girl, girl opportunities I could get. I took all the fetish ones and I was slowly working my way into the industry and every day just becoming more and more confident that I was gonna do this my way. I was gonna prioritize my content and my fans over the companies. Even back then, I just knew that companies, they would hire me and they would chew me up and spit me the out when they were done with me. And I always had that sense of awareness. I don't know where it came from. By the way, I was right, is what it is. But that was basically my year. It was just a whirlwind. It was a whirlwind of a lot of new experiences, a lot of new sets, meeting a lot of new people in the industry and really just coming into myself more and more and more. And I gotta tell you the first year, I've heard this before too, when you move to a new place, the first year is always the hardest. I even was in a community of people that I wanted to be around and doing a job that I loved. And it was still hard to just basically as an adult, like make all new friends. It's hard, not impossible though. I'm just gonna leave it at that for now. Just a whirlwind, lots of coming into myself, lots of figuring out how can I make more money every single day. That was always my intention as someone who had started a small business on her own. It was all about basically building my business from the ground up from scratch and I had no idea what I was doing but I just knew that I had no other there was no out I was in this I was gonna figure it out that's all for now I've been talking for a long time 
next time I'm going to tell you about some of the opportunities that came to me from going to these networking events and from going to random random events and parties and the good that did come from that so 